Hi, uh, right, Data Analytics Ireland, uh, Joe here again, happy to be back, hope you're all keeping well, hope um, work's going well and your programming skills are improving, certainly hope you're getting some benefit from this site. So today, not really concentrating on any particular package, um, more con concentrating on a particular uh, subject that be honest is cross programming language and a cross you could be using any it would appear in any package you may use and that concept is recursion so it's something that I've done a quick post on um, I've tried to keep it as straightforward as I can because there's a lot more to it but generally the nature of this post is to explain it as an entry level and certainly I'll put a link in at the bottom here uh, in Wikipedia which has a lot more information so if I just click this so there's a wicked leak link within the post gives you a bit more information on it so you can get that but for the moment let's just kind of do this as an induction and just explain recursion so what is recur what are you looking to do with recursion what is recursion um, essentially you're faced with a problem but the problem could be quite complex in nature um, or could there could be a couple of different things that go into it that um, essentially need a bit more understanding of the inputs to get you the outputs you need at the end so essentially recursion is looking to solve a problem uh, but by doing it, the way you would achieve that is just breaking it down into smaller chunks and by doing that you're able to then work on the smaller chunks which basically give you the final answer um if it's calling itself which is normal would in cursor if you call it a recursive function so usually you'd have a recursive function that would loop through itself to give you the final answer and the example below will kind of give you an overview or an understanding of that um Essentially, yeah, while you're breaking it down at hand as well, it can lead to quicker understanding solution to problems. So sometimes when you're tasked with a, a big problem, it may not be clear exactly what it is trying to be achieved or how you're going to achieve it. But sometimes when you actually break it down and uh, put it into a number of steps, um, the steps then make it clear an actual fact how you can achieve solving that problem. And that's pretty much what recursive and recursive functions trying to achieve so as an example um, let's just take factorial so probably I'm guessing everybody's in some way shape or form come across a, f a factorial and factorial on its own if you were to exclude these values here you're saying four four factorial it gives us the output of 24 but say this is your problem statement four factorial how do i get to four to 24. so it is broken down into a number of steps it's essentially you can do it four by three by two by one or you could do it by four times three factorial which is three by two by one basically one of the same thing um so uh, from studying this at school uh, basically how to break this all down is 24 is a product of all the four values f f from down to one. So the most important thing here is one. We're going to come up, come across this now in a while. And this is called your base value. Uh, essentially, as you go through it, as each value makes it up is, is, is known, it then can be seen how the result is made up. So you now gone have gone from a problem of four factorial. How do we get from here to here? To saying, on actual fact, we get from here to here because we know there's the, these steps here, okay? Which are the intermediate steps that get us from here to here, okay? Um, and that's basically a recursive function. So essentially what we'll break it down a bit further down here, but what it essentially is doing is looping through this four factorial until you get to the value of 24. Um, and there's three steps to it, okay? Um, one, as I said before, is, um, is the base value and just to kind of reiterate 
there's three steps is what we're doing is to kind of bring it back up what we kind of discussed up here is breaking it down into smaller chunks so that you can understand it better and you can actually understand how each step contributes to the final answer all right so a recursive function then is essentially what it's doing is it's looping on itself so if you think about four factorial it's looping on itself until it hit a hits a point that says okay we've gone through all we've gone all to the loops but none of the loop we want at each point of the loop we're going to check does it give us our final value does it give us our final value does it give us our final value and you only know your final value when you've actually hit the base level so if you think about it this way of a cursive function we're going to start off up here we have four factorial is four by three by two by one if it's if we start say this is the step one we're going to say four by three it gives us 12 but 12 hasn't reached the base yet so we're going to try it again from the start so the next step is going to be four by three by two again it's not reached one which is the base we're going to try again from the start um the final step is step three four by three by two by one it's reached the value of one so the recursion stops and the result is output so essentially at this point um it would output if this is your recursion function it would output the value of 24 because it's reached the value of one which is your base value which tells the recursion function that when you reach this value um stop now this is a very simplistic example but obviously when you get into this more and you use more complicated recursion functions you wouldn't be using these values and there's a bit more methodology and thought to go into but just to get the concept across this is kind of what it's doing so next thing what are the attributes so it's just kind of put my head my thoughts down on paper and just re-reading around and i came across a couple of things and to my own thoughts and a couple of things i said well this is this is probably some attributes of recursion probably common across you probably come across most articles um it basically calls it on itself um so this is basically what we've described above these are the repeated steps until it reaches the base of one meaning doesn't doesn't loop in loop infin, infinitely um, what that basically means is when it reaches the value one the base level it will stop if you don't have a base um if you don't have a base value it will loop infinitely so just very that's very important um, must be possible to break the problem down to smaller parts again you need to be able to break it down to smaller parts um, if you can't break it down to smaller parts recursive function is probably not appropriate in that circumstance um, basically as you're breaking it down into smaller broken smaller easier to solve uh, smaller parts broken down it must be easy to solve without further calculations so again as you can see up here we broke it into three different steps but it was quite clear at each step the output so we were basically checking four times three we haven't reached the value of one the base value go to the next step four times three times two not reach the value of one go to the next step so it's basically quick and easy and understandable steps and um it's basically helping us to solve our calculation and the final thing is once a smaller part is calculated this just becomes part of the answer to the overall problem so as an example these three steps are smaller parts of the overall but as you can see step one is basically telling the function recursive function that hey this is not our answer um, you should move on and because this is not our answer you should discard this then it's moving on to four times three times two and again it's like step one it's saying hey it's not the answer we're looking for but you can discard this so we should move on to the next step um, because this next step then reaches the goal we want to reach it stops and then outputs the value so we're essentially it's kind of like you see these like checkpoints at each point to say does this this point reach our end goal no does this point reach our end goal no so move on and forget about this forget about this hey at step three we've reached our end goal so that's what that's all about, all about so the final thing is to watch out for is when you're using recursion and i've kind of touched on it above is you gotta always have a base value without it you will um, encounter an infinite loop okay and one thing just maybe to show you on the website we've incorporated 
and you'll see it across here as well i have it down here and here and see it any up here i didn't want to miss them no we've incorporated tooltips so basic tooltips are just small bits of um wording just explain some uh, definitions of some topics that you might come across or some phrases so we've incorporated them over a number of our posts now so i hope they're useful and uh, as you go through this uh blog post and other blog posts you'll see them so it's uh, just there for better for the users to better understanding some of the common terminology used in programming so this one as it says to go back is you have this you always have a base value um that you can count an infinite loop um this is where code is written to iterate through a set of data values just keeps processing indefinitely this is because the code does not have at, at what point to turn no at what point to terminate because there is no exit code written so that's basically kind of a, a mini definition of an infinite loop um and you basically also need to be careful of not to have the video to break up on the smallest it won't allow the calculation the final answer so if you are trying to use a recursive function but you can't break up the problem to smaller steps it actually won't get to your end point so if we couldn't do these steps up here if this basic step was basically telling it move on to step two and a step two was basically saying oh we're not appropriate and move, move on to step three basically step three wouldn't happen because step one and step two couldn't be action so it's just kind of that's really what that point is saying so the final step then is why use recursion okay so as you can see this is a very straightforward solution but it helps to break up the task into smaller bits so if you have an end result but there's it's in your head logically or writing down a paper in one or two lines what are we trying to achieve sometimes that's it's it's a bit more complicated than that so you need to break it down into smaller steps so that would be one way of approaching it you could have a scenario where you've got multiple recursions in a program but within those there's a number of steps that are actually repetitive so you in theory could write one function that could sit in to those um those recursive functions and it doesn't have to be rewritten again so it actually helps to um, speed up the programming and the coding in a way um, okay and yes and then that's that's just a that final step there you only need to program for once if it's recurring code so that is a general overview of recursion um, there's not more to it I'll probably do some other more posts on it again in the future just wanted to kind of introduce the concepts hopefully people will get um, um some use out of it i'll be posting this up to here our youtube channel so let's just mute that and that's our introduction video so if you are there um would you really appreciate to subscribe and um basically follow us there you'll get all our updates there and we've lots of more videos as well so if i just take you through here okay lots of more videos there some on or on some on python program as well so thanks for visiting us give us a big subscribe please and we'll be having more videos soon take care and enjoy the rest of your day bye